we are live according to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what counts, right? You know, I wait until it comes up on the other thing with the delay to make sure that they're not lying to me. <laughs> uh, hello, hello. Hi, Shell. Hello, people in the house. Yeah, well, there's must be somebody here because I see people waiting, but they haven't said anything yet. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. Now we're live on the other device. So now I know it's true. <laughs> the real deal, huh? Yep. And Cindy Bagley's here. She said hi. Hi, Cindy Bagley. Hope you're oh, having a good that? morning. We're doing creative play today, which is just exactly that. We don't know what we're doing, but we're doing it. Yeah, it's about <laughs> right. <laughs> so we've got out some stuff and we got out some things and we're just going to do something. Just kind of waiting for some people, but I got out my um, color wheel this morning. And I was really feeling red violet. I think maybe it's because I'm thinking about making gifts for Valentine's Day, or maybe that's just the color I'm feeling today. I don't know. So I was thinking about playing with uh, maybe it's uh, red violet and it's complementary color, which is yellow green, and maybe throwing in some um, some neutrals, maybe some of these um, adjacent colors, uh, yellow, you know, yellows, reds, purple type pink i don't know so i got out some paints i've got out uh prism violet and light olive then i got out this naples yellow and i also have this raw umber which is about empty i realized i don't own any dark brown colors at all i'm so opposed to brown that i don't even have any <laughs> so I was looking through my paints. I'm like, I don't have any brown. I don't have anything. Like, I have some reddish colorish sort of, oak, uh, you know, earthy brown, but nothing like. I was looking for a dark brown, but I do have a dark dark brown and a pencil. I got out a couple of uh, green and and violet pencils. I got out some scraping tools. I got out. A little stack of papers if I want to do some collage and I think I'm just going to do abstract on this Canva board this is a Canva art board which comes in a, a pad you know there's multiple ones on here and it's it's thick and it's got a canvas it's a, um, surface and it is made by Canson Canson Canva, Canva art boards that's what I'm playing on today. Nine by twelve. Sounds like a plan. And I got a brush. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. So it looks like some more people are coming in. Hi, Marie and Peggy and Debbie and Rennie and um, Rennie's Carla. on vacation in Bullhead City. We got Carla here. Hi, Carla. I want to say hello to you all. Yeah, I just have my journal out here. You know, I've been trying to do daily art. And um, I started this with some uh, light molding paste. And it's dry now because, you know, it takes a while. But I, I did light molding paste through a stencil. I don't even know if you can see that. But I used this uh, heart stencil with some light molding paste. I guess um, I've been feeling the heart thing lately too. Uh, been feeling for all of my friends that are going through it, and so my my heart is full. So I think I will use the heart motif today on my page. I've got some. Um, this is just some of that tape that they use in drywall stuff. I don't know. I don't know where I'm headed with this whole thing. I'm just on a page. You know, I'm just going for it. That's what yeah. I feel like doing. So. 
get some scribbles out. I haven't made art all week. I haven't done anything with art. I haven't made any videos. I haven't done anything. So I just figured I'd start with some scribbles because I feel like scribbling. Maybe some finger painting. Maybe some, I don't know. Maybe I'll get some of this yeah. finger painting going and just, you know, get a start here. This is white gesso. You can, can uh, work on your any type of water soluble media with gesso or water. And I've got these, uh, these woodies, which are fun to scribble with because they're fat. They're fat. And you can just uh, with them. And then the other pencil I used is a Artorama um, Jumbo Jet. This one is called Sepia, which is a brown color, obviously. So that's where I'm starting on this. And it, you know, the first layer, you don't even know what might come out of it. Just making a layer, putting some marks. Hi, Vicki. How are you today? Glad you could join us. I've got some um, cheesecloth here. I'm just going to, I've got some light molding paste. I'm Sounds like embed you're doing some texture. Of that. You feel like doing texture. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, I'm into texture today. I don't know. I grabbed a few things. It, these may not even get finished, you know, because texture takes a while to dry down. So I'm... I'm going to put it in here. We'll see see how far I get with all this texture stuff. But I wanted to I wanted to add a few textural elements in here. So get my cheesecloth down. I'm going to actually spread it across. I've been doing one side of my journal, but um, I actually stretched this one out a little bit more just because the heart stencil was calling to me and wanted to move to the other side of the page. So you got to listen. You know, if it tells you to do that, then you do it. Right. Right. It's, that's what I do is it just, when it tells me to go someplace, I go there and then I'm going to take this uh, tape. It does have adhesive on the back, but I'm going to use this, uh, Paste to help embed it. Get that down. And I know it's white on white, guys. I'm sorry. It's, yeah. Hard to see. Yeah. Watching the herd. Yep. Watching the herd. <laughs> I don't like this paint. It's Yucky, but it's the only thing I had that was brown. Yeah. Yuck. Deco art, traditions, raw umber. Yeah, I don't like that tradition stuff. It's not a fan. It's just like it's chalky and just not a nice paint. I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. Very, very, you know, craft. Yeah. Craft. I so I got should buy some brown paint. Just gonna have to give in. <laughs> I've got that down. I'm gonna add, I think I'll add some more texture because I can. Yes, you can. And I've got I've got these uh, pearls. I've had them forever. You can see I haven't even used them. It's like, okay, you need to get some of that stuff out on a page here. So I'm going to add, without trying to stick my finger in it, do I have a spoon here? I should have a spoon here. You probably do. I do have a spoon. And then maybe I won't be wearing this stuff today. I just want to push this stuff down in the paste. Might even need a little more paste. It's going to be a thick one. Boop. 
That's kind of fun. Get some of those in there. Okay. Things are going crazy. Sorry, Neeks. I didn't mean to throw things at you. She hates it when I throw things at her. We'll put a little bit of that down into the paste. So if you're if you're starting a project and you just and you don't know what you want to do, start with color. Start with a color combo. I always think that that really or helps. white. <laughs> yeah, color. The the thing about color is you have to think about what colors are going to work together in the long run, right? I mean, somewhat. You know, you. You do have to be somewhat cognitive of it, but you don't have to be obsessed with it, you know? No. Because you can make it work out with neutrals if you have to, you know, somehow work it. You can. It's not working there. I like making this mark, this straight with squirrels and straight. That's like, I think, I think I may have come up with my signature mark. <laughs> you know, just like that. I don't know. There why. you go. Swirls are the thing. Swirl with a straight. Uh, okay, so those were some bright white pearls. Oh my gosh, they even have an expiration date on them. Can you believe that? Pearls? Pearls can't expire. Uh, well, yeah, because they're like candy pearls. Interesting. They were sold in a craft store, guys. But they're candy? Like sugar? Pearls, which are from U.S. Art Quest. Huh. Uh, these are mini prells. Huh. Perioles would be like what you put on a cake or something for decorating. Yeah. Huh. How interesting. Okay, let's get some of this other paint out. Got some Naples yellow and some of this uh, prism violet. Just gonna put it out on my so if I start eating my book, I probably need to seal this. <laughs> <laughs> well, if those pearls are made out of sugar, you're gonna need to seal it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, got some colors. I don't know. What are we gonna That's take? okay. Paint seals in a lot of stuff. So let me take a I'll take a quick picture. I know you guys can't really see. See the texture there? So that is going to be very thick and need to dry. I will probably need to work on something else for a while. I could add some color in here. I can add some color. White of some sort. And I'm thinking maybe some distress oxide um, spray. What happened there? Um, let me grab some spray. What have I got here? This is a twisted citron. With the comments. Let's see, no comments. 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 Yeah, um, hit that with a little bit of water too. So I want it to move. 
And what other color do I want to use? I need to wipe that off because we know how those things plug. Nope, don't want that. There we go. That's a nice bright green. Let's go with a, what's this one? Mermaid Lagoon. Not sure what happened there, but I fixed it. And I think I want it to drip a bit, so I'm going to wet that down, get it moving. the dark this is no don't want that that's mm, this is stormy sky got a lot of stormy sky lately this one I haven't opened yet you guys had some stormy sky down there in Texas last week And snow. Yeah. That's yeah. Get up some more gesso here. Hi, Barb. How are you today? this goes. I, I just want to add a little bit of the darker element in. You know me, I need I need the contrast. Always like the contrast. Okay, so now I'm just making a hot mess. So let me I'm a making a hot mess too. Dry. Well, I do something else. Got it dry in that. Maybe I can speed it up a little bit. Somebody sent me this one. It's new marks with. I think that's pretty fun. I 
I've got some on my finger though. Things are going on out here in the chat. My wet um, whip is already super dirty. Okay, so that's very, very wet. It will need to dry. So I'm going to put oh, the rest oh. away. Let me take another quick cut across there for you. Let's see if I can capture some of that. Yeah, kind of. I'll put some of this stuff up on the site. It's hard. It's hard to see. I know, just because of the color and what's going on down there on the page. So let me set this aside to dry. It's very wet. And I think I want to play with some other stuff. You know, this morning I was digging out stuff that I haven't had out in a while. Like I thought I needed to use these gold mica flakes. They probably are going to go on that page. Um, you know, I was digging out these little pearl things because I haven't used them. It's like we all have stuff in our stash that we don't think about using, right? I mean, we do, but, you know, we don't really want to get rid of it. <laughs> No, you don't want to get rid of it, but you also need to start using it. And so that's my goal this year is to pull out some of that stuff and use it. You know, other people may have some of this stuff in their stash too. So I have a gel plate here somewhere. I took it out. Here it is. Just a small one. Another thing that I don't play with often enough is well, you can't see gel play. Pan pastels. We play with that often enough. Hi, Ingrid. All right, I need some more of this. Let's thing. see. Who else? We've got people coming in here. Welcome, welcome. Nell, I don't think I said hello to you, Nell. And Ingrid. Peggy, I saw you earlier, but I don't think I mentioned you. How are you doing today? Patches, I'm so bad. I forgot your name. Elaine. Elaine, yes. That's Sorry. Right. It's been one of those weeks. Pretty sure it's Elaine. Correct us. I think you're right. I think you're right. She was here last week and I just forgot. Okay. Just a little sleep would probably help things a bit too. So we, what's that? we don't do that around here. If you haven't if you haven't played with pastels on your gel plate, you might want to. Oh, yeah, you definitely want to. I think I'll, I think I'll use this stencil. And I need some of my tools. I think I probably need a little bit of purple somewhere else. 
red violet. I'm so stupid. What am I doing? I don't know. What are you doing? Let's see. I've got blue on this one. So I'm going to start with that. to the green. This is pretty fun, just messing around with stuff. I like scraping. I like the sound. And I'll flip that over and get another color. magenta tone in here. Liven it up a bit. So one of the things that I got over the holidays, because, you know, I watched people using stuff with some uh, soft pastels. So I need to play with those sometime, too. Um, oh, yeah, I got some new soft pastels, too. I should yeah. have them out. Where are they? That's a good question. I like this. Very pretty. Yeah, I got myself some of those. Um, Pretty sure I had them out at one point, but I'm now not sure where they are. Scratching. Scratching is fun. Whatever makes your heart sing, that's a good attitude. Okay, so. I need some paint. And I think I'm just going to use a use a block for a palette for my paint. And a brayer. Need a brayer. Hmm. I'm mixing that green, green color. Just going to lighten up a little bit. It's a bit more paint than I need, but. A light coat. And I bring some paper over. Surely I have some paper here. Thank you. 
Let's see if I can get that to pull. Not sure about the temperature down here this morning. I had to turn the heat up. Well, if the heat's blowing, it'll dry faster. There we go. There's our pull. There's still chalk on there, so I'm going to get some more ink and see if I can get another pull out of that. Uh, where's my paper? Get a piece of paper ready. This is just some watercolor card, some cheap watercolor card, nothing fancy. But it should make a good background for a card or tag or something. I'm thinking. Here's the first one. All right, what do we have? I want to use. Depends on the colors that you like. There are a lot of different ones out there. Um, and when I when I started collecting, I just I picked the colors that I liked. And I was in a craft store where I could just pick the individual pots. Um, but they do have sets. Like if you look on Amazon, I'm pretty sure even in my Amazon store, there are probably some sets in there. But, you know, I... For me, if you're starting I'd, uh, and you're going to do something like this, I'd probably get a variety of colors because you're going to want to mix and match. If you're doing uh, regular art with them where you want to do the blending and stuff, they've got like the four different shades. Uh, and you can get them that way, you know, just like your pens where you have the dark, medium, normal color and light. I actually started out different than that. I went right straight for the set. And I bought the um, the one that was called Painting. And one, or what, Landscape. And another one that was called um, Portrait. And that gave me 40 colors to start out with. That's... Uh, and I pretty much haven't bought any since, but there's some other ones that I would like to get eventually. But that was how I started because I wanted I wanted a good color variety right off the bat. I didn't want to pick them apart. I wanted to be able to have something to use right away. If that makes sense. So this is a this is an example. Of what I'm talking about when you're in the same color family where you've got the darks and the mediums and the lights. I mean, you can you can buy them this way. Um, you can buy them individually. You know, it just depends on how you work and what you like. I, I did buy a metallic set because I like metallics. And see, I don't have a metallic set, even though I like metallics. I just never got any metallics at all. Well, that's kind of too bad because it would be nice to have some. Maybe someday I'll buy some more. I can't justify it right now because I yeah. haven't used them enough. You know? Well, and that's just it. I'm, I'm dragging out stuff that I haven't been using enough. So, you know, the reason the, the pan pastels are out of my desk is because the pastels reminded me, oh, You've got pan pastels, and you need to you need to use those. So that's why I'm pulling them out today. Now they are staining my my uh, surface here a little bit, which is I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem. 
but not, just so you know. Contrast, not, not contrast. But I do like the shapes that are forming. You do need some more contrast. Let's come in with this bright green. Let's see if I can get a little bit more going on there. So I've got a journal here. It's got some papers and stuff in it. This is this is one of those Arnold Rumbacher journals I had begun before. Um, and it has those pages that pop out, which is nice because, you know, you can, you can take them out and get really messy and then you can just pop them back in here. So if I want, let's see what's on the back side of this. I think I want something brighter though. Let me find. That one's got something on the back already. That's that's got. There's a good candidate. That's got some sprayed something. Not sure what. <laughs> some sprayed something on there. Elaine, both. Uh... Peg and I have extensive, extensive stuff on our on our regular channels. This is our live stream channel that we do together, but each of us both have our own channel. And we have extensive stuff of what to do with your gel plate. Yep. Like tons of stuff. Tons. Well, and there's actually tons of stuff on this channel if you just go down and look at the uh, playlist. Yeah, there is, but there's even more on our regular channels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we we have done for years on our own channel. We've only done this channel for a couple of years. So, yeah. So, I did just notice this morning when I was messing with the channel um, and getting everything set up that we did reach 1,000 subscribers on this channel. Yep. Kind of a milestone that we hadn't reached before. <laughs> so. so these are those okay. soft tools. You can get them in different shapes and sizes. Let me show you. If you're not familiar with all of that. Yeah, they also come from Pan Pastel. It's the same company. Designed for pastels, but um, for pan pastel, but also great for stenciling and things as well. Right. So these are the S O F F T tools, and if you look at the pan pastel booklet, you know there's a big color range, so you can see, you know, what kinds of colors you might like and what kind of combination and then they they talk about the different sets that are available there are videos on uh, panpastel.com you know if you're interested in learning more about the product itself and then you know this brochure has the different shapes and sizes of tools the um, sponges the bars that sort of thing so if i'm working if i'm working larger I like to use some of these sponge tools and just, you know, hold on to a sponge. Um, these different shape tools are great. And the cool thing about these is when you get done with the pastel, you can clean your sponge just off like that. And, and you can wash these sponges out and use them over and over again. So now if I want to go into another color, it's going to overlay just fine. But 
Um, they have them in different shapes, you know, so if you're trying to get into tight little corners, you can do that. If you're covering large areas, these are great for that. Just really and if I'm going to, you know, do smaller swatches, these little tools are good. It does not contaminate. No, it does not. The nice thing about the pan pastel, okay, suppose, suppose I have, let me take this. Suppose I have this on my tool and I go right into this light color. Well, it's just sitting there on top. All I have to do is clean that off very simply. Clean my tool off. And I'm in business, okay? The nice thing about the pan pastels is they do not make as much dust as a regular pastel does. So like yeah, if you're looking at sort of something in them that makes them more stable, like a yeah, yeah. a binder of some sort. If you're looking at this type of pastel, you know, when I put this down, it's going to be more chalky. I mean, it is creamy. You can blend it out. But it's going to create more dust. All right. It's just the nature, the nature of the pastel. And then what you do need to do is seal this. Um, I use Spectrafix seal. I'll have to go find that when I get done here to, to seal in what I've done today. But um, it's something that's low odor and can be used in your studio and, you know, is a good... And it's Good not aerosol. Non aerosol. Right. Which is nice. So I'm just laying down color. And when I'm ready to change color, you know, I can come back, clean this off, flip this over. Use the other side. You know, I think this really just. And continue on. Pink. Let's see. Let's get a nice light blue now. Be something different. Looks almost gray on here. Which I use? Maybe this one. I feel, I'm feeling it. And you know, you can mix and match. I can come back to my uh, soft pastel and, you know, make marks using the soft pastel too. Let's get a little daring with some red. Let me see if I can find that. A lot of playing in your future. Absolutely.
this All right. is SpectraFix, which is what I use on things like this. And it's going to set. And if you're going to do, if you're going to want to set this, what I recommend is because it's not an aerosol bottle, you know, you're going to want to hold your paper up and just, you know, do like that and set that. And you can heat set it. Perfectly fine to heat set. But I'll bring it up to the camera and you can see the difference in the mark making. Now it's a little heavy handed. Normally if I'm doing this, I would you know, spray it lightly, let it dry, spray it lightly, and do three or four applications. I was in a hurry because we're doing a live show. So, you know, there's some movement of the pastel just because I sprayed it heavily. But you can see where I did not blend it out, and you get these uh, marker, chalky marker type things. And then here it's really smooth where the Pan pastel is. Hi, Yoga Mama. And Laura's in the house. Hi. So I think on this one, let me grab a different stencil. Collage. I guess I'm going to have to dry this up. I've got, oh, here we go. I've got a little bird. Or I've got this, let's do this Valentine looking thing. I think I'm in the Valentine mood. So I'm going to get some paint. And I want a soft brayer. A little more paint than that. Messy, 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 messy. Where's my pen? This is a sponge brayer, not a hard rubber one. Let's get some space here. Get some pieces. I'm just going to spray some of that paint over this through the stencil. Might even take a little bit more. That sponge soaks up a lot of paint. You could also, you know, you don't have to have a sponge brayer. You could do this just with your regular cosmetic sponges or whatever you wanted to do. This is just quick and easy for me to get the paint down here. So I can move on to something else. And we'll take a look, see what that looks like. There we go.
So now this can dry and it's ready for some doodle effects. Yeah, Cindy will be with us tomorrow. Absolutely. So come join, tune in. <laughs> tune in to Friday broadcast. So let me get this out of here. I'm going to get a baby wipe. Clean up some of my mess. Okay, so let's go back to where's the other one? I had two of them. I know I had two of them. It's disappeared. I didn't take it. Yeah. I probably threw it on the floor someplace to get it out of the way. You know how that goes. Oh, there it is. I need to do that myself. Yes. There it is. All right. So we played with them on the gel plate. We played with them with the soft pastels. Let's turn this into something. I've got uh, got some stuff I want to use. Oh, that looks like a good one. Do this, shall we? Um, I've got a spot there, but that can be cut down. No problem. So I need some tape. This is, oh, this was another little thing that I picked up lately. This is a, uh, it's actually a sugar bowl. But what I do is I keep my uh, chamois in here, you know, for cleaning. And it helps me keep my hands clean as well as my tools. So I'm going to just put a little bit of tape down on here to mask. Oop. Not very straight, Peg. Okay. And over here. Oh, I can reach on that one. I'm just mostly masking the white because I want the stamped image where the paint and chalk is. Or pastel, excuse me. Pastel. So let me get a let me get a tool. Looks like it's big enough. See if it'll. Oh yeah. All right. Get some ink. Ink that baby up. Hmm. Well, I might as well just start pulling them down. I know what happens. And honestly, any silhouette stamp would work for something like this. 
I'm making quick cards. Oh. Yeah, not the best, but here's the deal. Now you've got a line image. You can make it your own, and the way we do that is we just grab one of these brush markers, right? And use the image. I probably need to re-ink that pad too. would help. That probably would help. So you guys get the drift. You can come in here and alter the stamped image, come back with some, you know, white gel pens or metallic pens would be pretty also, right? Oh, I'm not talking and I'm not looking at the chat. Well, looks like they're all chatting amongst themselves. And I've got good. my head down. So. That's good. I'm glad you're all friends and you're all talking to one another. Yep. Because we get busy and get our head down and forget what we're doing. Yep. Definitely. Okay, so that's that's a good start. And then, you know, you can pull the mask. And add some other, other stuff to it. You know, like if you want to highlight something on a leaf. Here. That one does not want to flow real well. Let me get something else here. Paint might still have too much moisture in it. Sometimes you need to let these things sit for a day. Before you come back to them. Let that dry down. But you can see how you can just doodle right on top ah, that's not working the best either so then you would need something like a turns into a something you would send to somebody get a 
cutter out here. And I can eyeball where this edge is here. And then I can start lining up my cuts. Oh, what did I do? I did that on, on that edge. So I need to do this on this edge. Okay, so now I've got that. And I can say good things are going to happen. And I can also take a, another marker. And just edge this right here. Give it a little more interest. And what else do I want to do? Um, I need a card base. Number one. So let me find. Cardstock. Uh, really wouldn't matter. Kind of like that one. I like that. Blue would be another layer in behind there and make it pretty. You know, if you're layering, that would be a nice combo, right? And of course, you can always add another layer of the black to bring it up off the page. Uh, glue, here we go. Got some glue. Maybe. Oh, that one's not coming out. Haven't been in that one enough. Oh, let's get some tacky glue. Oh, that one's not open. All right. Not going to use that one either. What else do I have out here? Got my glitter glue. I have a feeling I'm going to have a hard time getting this tape off that I have around the edges because I think I've collaged over it. Require me to use some exacto knife action, I bet. <laughs> because I like to collage. I really like doing that. <laughs> Green would have been nice on there too. Mm. 
that one. So, and then I smear the, yeah. <laughs> Good going, Peg. Having smearing problem. Whoops. So, but the, about the only thing that's going to work on this right now is if I were to uh, use a paint pen because that stuff is way too, way too moist. You can see what kind of results you can get. Just playing around. The um, <sighs> stop. Step away from the clock. Place rubber cement. Yeah. Okay, so that's the gel prints. Let's look at, this is the, the page we had started. And this will be the same thing. This is probably still a bit wet. But if you're using a paint marker, you can probably come back in here. Doodle on top of it. You don't have to wait a whole day. So this uh, heart stencil would make some cute valentines, too. It's bright and cheery. Yeah, I want to make some valentines. I was actually thinking about it today, and then I just kind of got off track here. But... If you get overwhelmed at the holiday time and you don't get all your cards out to people that you want to do. Valentine's is a great time. To do it. And that usually happens to me. I got baking, I got family, I got, you know, all the stuff. All the stuff and the things that you have to do at the holidays and I run out of time. Yep. So I will send Valentine's instead. That works. Yeah. And I just really kind of like them better anyway. I've always been fond of hearts. Me too. One of my favorite images. Yeah.
Now, I'm not being very careful with this because, you know, it's just play. All right, where's that? It started out with this lavender color, I mean this purple color, and then ended up with other colors. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> I wanted to play with this red violet. A nice color red violet. Yes. Yes. You see, you can just keep playing away. Wow, look at what time it is. <laughs> Not even close to done. So we got that. We got that. Let's look at our other page and see how it's coming. This isn't going to be done, I don't think. It is still very wet, of course. I thought I would be able to finish it. Move these pan pastels. And I don't know if you guys can see that. I would probably, if this were drier, maybe I can do a little bit. I don't know. Um, well, let's incorporate, see if I can incorporate some things on that. Um, I'm thinking I'd like to use a butterfly on here. What do we got? Oh, there's a very glittery one. That would look pretty. Let's let's look at that. What else have I got? I've got another butterfly. There's a butterfly with some floral. Do not help. Yeah. Okay. So also got this. Uh, these are those. Uh, what do you call them? Vellum butterflies. These are from who? Cheese Rabbit Studio. Interesting. Don't even know where I got them from. <laughs> Did you say Cheese Rabbit Studio? Cheese Rabbit Studio. That's what it's called. Yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if I pick up some of this blue from the pan pastels. Let me try it over here on these hearts. This has got so much work to do still. See, I can bring out to do. bring out some of that in the background there. With those pan pastels. Those are very wet, so they're moving everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> mm 
but I think you can see where the texture paste is in the, in the background of this now. There's hearts over there, and it's moving across the page over here. And I could add a little bit of that green tone in there too, just to soften it a bit with the pan pastel. And then, of course, once you've got that down, you're going to want to take your Spectra Fix before you add another layer or something. You're going to want to fix that with your Spectra Fix just to seal those pastels in on your page. I think I like this butterfly. You guys like the butterfly? Hi, Arlene. I think I've got some that's light molding paste. I should have some heavier body paste here somewhere. I'm going to put that down. Um, I would recommend, you know, because there's a lot of stuff on this page. Well, and the other thing that we can put on here is this. See, this is what this dries like, these mica flakes. But when you're looking in here, you don't see any of that. But those would have been pretty on that page also. I just wanted to add a little bit of something, something. gold, gold. But they're suspended in an adhesive that dries clear. And now I've got it all over my finger. Like you do. Yeah, I like I do. This one has so much work yet. <laughs> so much work to do. But it did give you an idea about how you could start with a color idea and then go from there, you know. I like to start that way because I'm really, really, really obsessed with color. I can't make dark edges around things. It's crazy like that. You're saying glossy accents would work, Shell. For what? I'm not sure. I haven't been watching what you're doing because I was off finding my heavy gel to put this down with. Uh, let me get a palette knife. This stuff needs to be used. It's getting a little rubbery. You getting a little rubbery. this one to go. Well, anyway, it's getting there. 
I think we're pretty much getting close to being done, aren't we? Oh, uh, got maybe 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Yeah, something like that. Mess around a little bit for 10 minutes. With some ideas here. We're going to want this one. Maybe down here somewhere. I don't necessarily want it all tacked down because when the book is closed, it's going to keep it in there, but I do want it to stay where it is on the page. So let me see if I can get capture something with that. hard to see but you can see the dimension on the page I don't know I probably need to do something more over on this side but for today this all needs to dry down a bit and I think what I'll do is put something on top of here, a little weight to hold that in place. Good pencil for shadows. Well, there's lots of good ones. I mean, um, there's graphite. Like this is this is a whole graphite set that's got the graphite pencils and the sticks. Uh, this is very inexpensive. Um, you can use the uh, Lyra graphite pencil like this. So if I'm, let's show you, if I'm just putting some shadow in under this, and I'm going to come back with a If I got water in this water brush. Yep. I can just blend that out softly. Of course, this would have been better if I had um, matte medium on the page. It's going to move better. Um, anytime, anytime you're going to blend out like that, it's better if you put a coat of matte medium over it. Um, another thing that you can use for blendability would be your big brush markers as long as you've got you know a sealed surface so that you can go in there and blend that out big brush markers are good um, you can use of course your stabilo all and these do come in other colors they're not just in black so you can get them in blue and brown and you know other colors for shadowing gray uh, what else do I want to tell you about? Um, another pencil that would be good is a um, watercolor pencil. You know, you could you can use a watercolor pencil and then just come back with your water and blend that out for your shadow. So there are lots of different choices depending on what you want, whether you want a color or a, of course, I don't even have that in the frame here. This is with a water-soluble pencil. Let's see. 
<laughs> Blending that out for a shadow. I want this to show up more. Seth, can I help answer your question? Um, there's the pencils from Jerry's Artorama. There's uh, man, how many how many ways can we shadow? Lots. A million. Um, <laughs> right. She mentioned the uh, the big brush, but there's also regular brush in the fabric Castello. Yeah. yeah, there is. That are good for really good for shading. I might oh, I even. oh well, there took a layer of the paper right off. I guess it's not dry. I need to leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything dry on this page. Huh. It's a little bit wet. That's okay. But I'm just I'm just picking up some of that color off of that pencil. To add in behind there to lift that off the page. Yeah, you can blend out with matte medium, absolutely. Um, lots of choices. Lots and lots of choices. Main thing is, you know, look in your stash, see what you have already. Start playing with the stuff that you have. You know, if I look at mine, I just showed you the uh, watercolor pencil, but I mean, if I just reach over here in one of my buckets, right, and I grab these pencils, you know, here's a here's a Prismacolor pencil. Uh, this is a Pit Pastel. This is one of those Jerry Zardorama pencils. Um, the Stabilo, and you can get them in white and black and brown and all kinds of. This is an oil. China marker from Sharpie. Um, this is the Conte crayon. Another watercolor. So you can see, you can have a whole arsenal of things to do that with. Definitely. The other, the other. Um, the Jerry's Artorama comes in the four different colors, and they are not as dark as the Stabilo All. They they just they're a little more subtle. So if you're looking for something a little more subtle, I'm trying to find the rest of them. My black's in there somewhere, and my white's in there somewhere. But there's a there's a black and a white, and then these two. Um, yeah, this one I've been playing with today is the brown, the sepia. I've okay. been playing with it all day. Yeah, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, anyway. So maybe I can maybe I can get this a little bit closer so you can see some of the some of the shadowing. And you can see the uh, in here you can see where the pan pastels are picked up on that surface. It just gives you all that dimension. And then, uh, of course, we made that page and that one. And that's about it for me today. I love what you're doing there with your abstract shell. Thank you. It's not done. <laughs> but it's, it's you know, probably three quarters of the way, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or more. Anyway. Just starting out with uh, a color concept, basically. Hi, Debbie. Yeah, we'll we'll talk soon. Love what you've been doing on your daily work. 
All right. Looks like it, it is time to be done, I guess. Kind of looks that way. Yeah. I, I won't be making a fast video today on my channel for those of you guys who watch. I'm going to go out to Chiricahua uh, National Park with my kid, and we're going to go hiking. Oh, we'll fun. Right after this. We need to get out of this house and then go somewhere. So that's our plan. And I think so, that's a good plan for everybody right now. You know, if you can get out in nature at all and enjoy the day a little bit, you yeah. know, do it. So the speed video and the finishing of this project will be tomorrow. Besides, it needs to dry. Yeah. So, so thanks, everybody. We appreciate you having been here with us. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely hands. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>